Good afternoon everybody, welcome to the final Oz Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update for the nation today the 29th of April 2014. My name's Chris Nitzo and this will be the final one for this season, however post season, uh, around about the middle of May, we're expecting to release an overview of what happened in the season and just a brief look back at all of the tropical cyclones that affected the Australian region. Looking at the week that was rainfall wise, we had some pretty decent rain over northern inland Queensland and the central coast of Queensland, also the north tropical coast of Queensland. Some really good rain up here in the northeastern parts of the Northern Territory. Probably not to the extent that some of the model guidance was tipping. We were looking at possibly the chance of two, three, even 400 millimetres up in this area. But most of the area got 100 or more millimetres. The reason it wasn't as intense as expected was that that low really washed out into nothing more than much of a trough system. It's now reforming into a bit of a low out here in the Timor Sea. We'll talk about that shortly. The big news, of course, is the very heavy rain, extreme rainfall experienced in Western Australia. And if we zoom into that area a little bit more, you can see this Exmouth region, 2 to 300 millimetres. This region receives 2 to 300 millimetres a year folks and it's all happened in about two or three days over the past well, over the weekend now the culprit there was ex-tropical cyclone jack which was a category three cyclone about 2,000 kilometers or sorry 1,500 kilometers off the coast of Exmouth what happened is jack died but the the remnants of jack pushed a lot of moisture uh, in from the north in from the trophic tropics into a trough system that pushed eastwards uh, and that trough system and associated cold front uh, really created havoc in this particular area of Western Australia so a year's worth of rainfall in about two days. Interesting system coming through for Eastern Australia very shortly which will create the first sign of a winter or a really strong winter flow uh, into southeast Queensland and New South Wales as a trough system, front system, uh, they, they combine over the weekend and they really create some very cold weather over parts of Queensland. May also create some very intense thunderstorm activity, believe it or not, just before they hit. The sort of storms that you get with these sort of really vigorous cold fronts uh, have the potential to be quite severe with, with some very strong wind shear in those thunderstorms. Um, across the west, it's going to be fairly benign and across the north, fairly benign, uh, there is a little weak trough or low out here to in the Timor Sea, it's going to push further to the west and eventually get caught by this jet stream here. And this jet stream will push the system back out here towards the east southeast in the longer term. And once again, there's a chance of some serious rainfall um, over Western Australia. Just where exactly on that western coastline it's going to happen, we're not sure of. So if it happens around Exmouth again, that could be quite disastrous after 200 millimetres already. Uh, we could see something in the vicinity of 1 to 200 again. Again, um, with this next system. We'll talk a bit more about this in the state update tomorrow but overall we're going to see that low push westwards and then uh, then transition into an extra tropical cyclone or a cold cord system and push southeast. Now that cold cord system will still have some roots in the tropics and it will create a very very moist flow into the next frontal system pushing into Western Australia and really smash this area worth of rainfall. Now we're not quite sure if it's going to hit the coast around Port Hedland, Caratha, Onslow, Exmouth or further to the south around between Geraldton and Coral Bay. There's a little bit of a model split there in the long term. It's not going to be a cyclone Clone, but it is likely to be quite an intense, uh, in, in some models it's likely to be quite an intense low and even if it's not that intense it's going to push in a lot of moisture from the tropics into a very vigorous cold front. And here's the UK Met model forecast, the Canadian and the European. So you can see basically all of them are suggesting an approach of the system on the Western Australian coastline and still remaining a significant feature but we'll remi remember that by the time it gets down this far it won't be tropical but you can see here it's pulling in a lot of moisture from the north into its particularly its eastern, its eastern semicircle so um, as the system gets closer to the coast you're going to see some very heavy rainfall along the western coast of Australia. So when we track rainfall we can see that there's a fairly vigorous cold front now I showed you that on the synoptics 
the synoptic chart uh, and it's also attached attaching itself to a little bit of moisture streaming in from the tropical low out here in the Timor Sea so you can see the rain really associated with that as we head to Wednesday we're going to see that trough system uh, and frontal system pushing eastwards we're going to see that Timor Sea low pushing westwards in the southeast southeast Indian Ocean not expecting it to develop significantly although as it starts to interact with a trough system or a frontal system and the jet stream out here to the west of Western Australia we may actually start to see some deepening however we'll also see a transitioning of the system to extra tropical uh, so it won't be a tropical cyclone it could be an it could become an extra tropical cyclone on Thursday most of the rain remains offshore um, we also see the potential there uh, of some showers and possibly even some storms over the southeast parts of Queensland just ahead of that very cold change on Thursday, Friday and then by Saturday that cold change will have pushed through but on Friday the same sort of thing we're looking at those showers possible some possibly some uh, intense and severe thunderstorm activity occurring there depending of course on how that trough system pushes across on the Thursday, Friday and possibly even into early Saturday the tro the tropical or extra tropical low by that stage is located to the west northwest of Exmouth and you can see all the rain associated with that however as we head to Saturday it stops moving west and starts to move in a more southerly direction and it's right on the edge of your screen here and then from that from that position in the longer term it starts to move out here to the east or east south sorry southeast or east southeast so uh, in the longer term we do have to watch that for some major rain potential around WA uh, also, we're going to see by that Saturday, we're really going to see some colder weather in through um, most of eastern Australia. So if we look at the next four days, I've just shown you, but if we look at the four days after that, uh, this is where we can start to see that very heavy rain returning to the Gascoigne coastline and even further to the south on the WA coastline. Now that could be a significant flood threat, especially because the areas that have already copped a bucket load of rain could be copying some more uh, and some more in that type of intensity that they've already copped. All right, folks, so thus ends our final update of the Oz Cyclone Chasers Australian Cyclone season. We will now talk to you tomorrow in the state-by-state -state updates, and then around about mid-May, we will have a video update that looks back on the entire season. But that's pretty much it from us until next season in terms of any cyclone activity. Alright folks, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again tomorrow in the state-by-state -state updates.